My name is Joe. My friends and I are avid off-road enthusiasts. The three of us always spend our weekends finding trails and mudding. We are all in our mid-twenties and have been pals since we were in middle school. This story takes place in the early fall as the leaves all start to change to that burnt orange and red color. My friend Trey muds with his 1995 Toyota Tacoma. He has the most lifted and monstrous setup on his rig. Imagine a six inch lift kit with mutters that shouldn't be street legal. My other buddy Sean runs with a 1972 GMC Jimmy that is bright orange. It is an absolute classic ride. His truck is close to $20,000 in mods done to it. I drive my 1999 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a similar setup to Sean. Back to the story at hand. The guys and I head to some old logging roads near our hometown. We know these roads like the back of our hands. We always look for the most jagged and rough stretches of road we can grip our tires with. As we find a solid option for our four-wheel adventure, my buddy Trey, who is leading our group up road, checks in on our walkie-talkies. We always have an open channel that allows us to communicate while out and about. Apparently right after Trey turned on his walkie, he overheard some faint chatter on the channel we usually use. Trey yells, Joe, Joe, are you there? I answer, what's up brother? He says, someone on the channel said they are watching three off-road vehicles climb the hill. The two voices over the radio said, we will wait until they reach the ridge and then we will handle it. What the fuck man? What the fuck could he mean? Sean said, guys these motherfuckers are going to try and jump us and take our shit. I told my friends that we need to stay calm and pull off before that point. We can and will avoid this bullshit guys. My friends agree and we found a turnoff about 100 yards before the ridge. I hopped out of the jeep and grabbed a pair of binoculars. Trey and Sean join me and step up on the jeep to get a better view. There is a parting of the pine trees off in the distance and we can see two large men in overalls posted up near their trucks with rifles. Fuck! They're looking right at us! A bullet whizzes by my ear and my ears start to throb and ring. Trey and Sean scream and jump for cover. I see them scream my name but I can't hear anything. Just the high pitch ringing. I slam my hands against my ears trying to clear my head. I look up and my friends are scrambling to their vehicles. Boom! Another shot rings out and hits Trey's headlight. My ears clear and I jump to my feet, swing open my door and jump in. I'm shaking and I can't get my key to line up with the ignition. Please God get us out of this nightmare. My truck starts and Trey and Sean are in their trucks as well. We slam on the gas and head down the hill full tilt. Once we reach the main paved road, we notice this truck barreling towards us. Two men are shooting at us. I have no idea what we did or didn't do to them. I lean over my console and puke all over my passenger seat. My nerves are shot. Just as these mysterious human hunters start tailing us, I see a cop on the opposite side of the road. The cop sees this chase and immediately this vehicle slows pulls off a side road and out of sight. My friends and I pull over to the side of the road, try to make sense of what just happened. The officer said he received a call and another car passing by saw this scene. Cop knew that we were the victims. We step out and hug each other still shaking. The officer takes a statement from us and to this day I have never off-road it again. Fact. Story number two. There is nothing like going four-wheeling in the dead of winter after a fresh snow. I usually take my Subaru out back up in the foothills near my house. The roads I take to get up to the snow are some of the worst in the state. 
the potholes and washed out parts are borderline dangerous. My Subaru Outback has a 4 inch lift on it, so my clearance is legit. I put some larger tires on it for the extra grab. I always take a handgun with me and a hunting knife every time I go out. I have a good sized first aid kit and an emergency kit in case I ever break down or get stuck in the elements. I packed a light snack and headed up to the foothills. This trip was no different than any other at first. I finally reached the road that ends and turns into gravel. The road was free and clear of debris so far. Once I reached some snow on the roadway, my car made a strange sound. It's hard to describe but it only lasted for a brief moment. I shrugged it off and proceeded. The road started to get rough so I put my car in x-drive, crawled for about 10 minutes up the hill. Once I passed the rough patch I was in about 4 inches of snow on the road. The total drive is about 4 miles of gravel and rough road till you get to the top of the hill. I noticed that a small tree had fallen in the middle of the road. I carry a small handsaw as well. Any off-road enthusiast will have something like this for that very reason. I got out of the car and started to assess the situation. Something seemed amiss though. The wilderness was too quiet for my liking. Usually there's at least something audible, whether it be birds chirping or wind blowing through the trees. I heard a rustling right behind my ear. I spun around and saw a man in a huge trench coat standing perfectly still. My gun was under my front seat, but I always carry my hunting knife on my right hip. I remained calm and asked him what he wanted. He just smiled and walked back into the forest. What the actual hell just happened? My spine was tingling and my adrenaline on full display. I watched him until he was completely out of sight. I was in a good mood and didn't feel like he was a massive threat, so I decided to press on and continue up the road. Damn it, I wish I would have just turned tail and left that day. I'm finally five minutes from the top of the hill, and that beautiful view, when three large masked men walk into the road and force me to stop. I reached for my gun and had it in hand. These men proceed to flank my position and surround my car. I have no choice in that moment and decide, fuck this, I'm driving forward. I slammed on the gas and hit one of these creeps and I heard the man scream in pain. It's my life or his and I'm not waiting around to find out what their next move is. I hauled ass up the hill, turned my car around to go back the way I came. The other masked attackers were checking on the man in the trench coat and threw a large machete at my car. It shattered my back windshield and I nearly pissed myself. The men gave chase for a short time then gave up. Holy shit, what just happened and why did this happen? I know for a fact that this first trench coat freak was a part of their group and he must have been sizing me up and the situation. I've always prided myself on being an observant and aware person. That day could have ended so much worse for me. I thank God that today wasn't my last day. Story number three. My best friend and I went mudding this past weekend. We are both female and 21 years of age. I've been a tomboy most of my life and have always had more guy friends than girls through the years. My best gal pal and I have been into anything outdoors and like to chase that adrenaline rush. We both have huge pickup trucks that are built for off-roading in the muddiest of conditions. We partake in the off-roading that you see on an off-road enthusiast channel on ESPN. The dumbest and craziest of shit goes down when the two of us come together. There is a mud track that is specifically for mudding in our hometown. We hit the track early in the day around 9am. My friend's dad owns the track and lets us come and go as we please. I drove my truck on the track and started to warm up the tires. 
I like to get a few good runs in before I go all out. My friend was already tearing up the track and I was about to join her. I looked in my rearview mirror and noticed a mysterious truck was behind me. I'd never seen this vehicle in my life. I called my friend on her cell and she said she noticed this as well. No one should be on the track right now. The track is hidden really well from the main road, so whoever this was must know my friend and or her father. The truck is now right on my bumper and flashing its lights and honking. I give it more gas and try to avoid this truck from causing me serious harm or damage. My friend is still on speakerphone and she yells that she's going to get on his ass and that we should force him off the track if possible. He brake checked her and she smashed into his steel bumper. We are in survival mode at this point. What do I do? What do I do? I spun my truck around, slammed on the gas and smashed into the side of his truck. I hit him at 40 miles per hour. He was so focused on my friend and her truck that he didn't see me coming. I t-boned his ride and he flipped over two times. We both pulled up to the truck cautiously and got out of our trucks. The man had a dark and blackened out helmet on. I heard a siren and noticed a police car pulling onto the track. Apparently my friend's dad came in shortly after we hit the track. He must have phoned the police. The cops pulled out a man that was in agony and he had a compound leg fracture with his bones sticking out through his jeans. Holy shit, the man was my ex-boyfriend, Darren. We had a horrible breakup only a month earlier, and I had to get a restraining order filed against him. He was so verbally and physically abusive. I'm so thankful that I wasn't alone on the track that day. My girl had my back yet again. Lord knows what I would do without her and her dad.